You are listening to Believe It, the radio life story, the radiography of me, Richard Wilson. In the 90s, I was in a little gang with Stephen Mangan and Arabella Weir. Every Friday night, we met in the Crown and Two Chairman in Soho for a pub quiz. Arabella was in her 30s, Stephen was in his 20s, but they were happy to hang out with me, even though they were young enough to be my children and squabbled like children too. Question 9. Which Impressionist painter painted Bar at the Folie Berger? Picasso? Picasso is not an Impressionist. Is that right? I rather think it probably is. <sighs> is that a yes or a maybe? Yes, Picasso was not an Impressionist. Oh, Monet was an Impressionist. True. And Monet painted Bar at the Thingy Thing? I'm sure he did. You don't sound sure. Listen, I was good at art at school, OK? Great, I'm sure Monet was too. Oh, shut up. What's our answer, gang? Monet, definitely. Oh, uh... Or, or the other one. Ugh. Who's the other one? I can't remember. We're wasting time. I'm writing Monet. Oh, Manet. So it's Manet. Is it Monet or Manet, Arabella? Monet. No, Manet. Manet. It's Monet. You know the first rule of pub quiz? Get the answer right. Please. What's our final answer? Monet. After the quiz, we went to Soul Night at the Locarno, a club off Leicester Square. Dancing. A great way to release tension. Cheer up, Stephen. We only lost by one. Yeah, we all know what that one was. <laughs> well, you didn't even know what year they passed the 1844 Factories Act. Neither did you. Well, I did. I know a trick question when I see one. Go, Richard. Oh, Woo! shake that thigh. <laughs> For an old chap, I can boogie, no? How old are you now? 59. Wow. I'm 27, you're twice as old as me, more. Still got it, though, hasn't he? Woo! He has, and he's flaunting it. I am, <laughs> and I'm going to keep on flaunting it until I can flaunt no more. <laughs> yeah! After the Lucana, we went back to my flat for a takeaway curry. We were the original pub quiz boogie curry gang. Oh. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Oh, ha, that's what we paid for. You got any mango chutney, Richard? Oh, sorry, yes, I forget it every time. No, 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 I'll get it. I know where it is. You've got a hell of a lot of books, Richard. I have, haven't I? Those shelves look like they're going to collapse. Not for a while yet, they're not. Oh, God, you've got Middlemarch. My English teacher told me when I was 15 that Middlemarch was the greatest novel ever written, and I still haven't read it. You'll get to it, I'm sure. What's it like? Profound. Wise, utterly absorbing. How long did it take to read it, though? I haven't. That's what it says on the back cover. I've read that many times. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Could you've got a lot of books. I was just saying that. Have you read all of them? No, and I've not listened to all my LPs, but I wouldn't be without a single one of them. Keep on buying them, then. Yeah, because we can still see some walls. What's that Mozart monster? It's a box set of his symphonies. How many did he write, C uh, compose? I, I, I don't even know the word. I think it's hum. Mozart hummed 41 symphonies. Blimey. And I don't even own one symphony by anyone. Haydn wrote over 100. Mm, that sounds desperate. If you haven't cracked it by 99, give up. Sibelius only wrote seven. Good for him. Where's your Haydn box set then, Richard? That's a crane job. That's coming in through the window. <laughs> you can take the piss all you want. Thank you very much. One day you'll understand the sheer joy of having loads of stuff. Well, I certainly don't want classical music stuff. Human League, Craftwork, Wilson Pickett, that'll do me. You're in your 20s, Stephen. You travel light. You probably don't have a fish knife, let alone a Mozart LP. Don't even have a fish. Potato masher? Umbrella stand? I've got one umbrella, which I've lost. So why would I want to stand? He doesn't even have a gravy boat. <laughs> no. Will you share the joke? Sorry. Sorry, yes. Every Friday night, I check your kitchen cupboards for gravy boats. You've acquired another since last week. That means you're up to five, then? Yes, I have five gravy boats. I don't think that's unusual. <laughs> no, 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 it's standard. Why, it's a drop in the gravy boat ocean. I don't know why you bastards find this so amusing, but yes, in the course of my life, I've acquired some gravy boats. And this week, I cleared out my Aunt Sheila's house, because she died, 
and I took a gravy boat as a memento. Happy now? <laughs> We're sorry your aunt died. Mm, we are. But she didn't die in vain, did she? She died so you could build up your gravy boat collection. Your gravy navy. <laughs> Can we talk about something else, please, now? We just don't want you turning into a mad old man whose place is stuffed with stuff. Well, thank you for your concern. Everybody finished? Hold on. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take the plates into the kitchen. No, 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 sit down. I've got some news. Oh, hello. I'm pregnant. <gasps> but listen, don't worry, I'll be eating curry and dancing for a while yet. I don't know about the pub quiz, though. That does cause me so much tension. Maybe check with your GP. Oh, wow. This feels like a watershed moment. Uh, a, a break your watershed moment. I don't know what I'm talking about. Shut up. Life moves on, eh? As I said that, I knew our gang would break up. 25 years passed. 25 years in which Stephen, too, got married and had kids. In all those years, we never spent a Friday night quizzing and dancing and vindalooing. It took a great man to bring us back together. I refer not to myself, but to my old pal, Ian McKellen. A few weeks ago, Ian kindly cooked Sunday lunch for the two of us in my flat. Make sure you slice it thinly, please. Will do. Speed is of the essence. I'm speeding. I'm speeding. There. One onion thinly sliced. Oh, no. Those slices are too thin, damn it. How'd you suggest I make them fatter? Well, OK, OK. Just put them in the pan. I have to get stirring. Faster. Faster what? I'm, not, I'm talking to myself. He stirred those onions with passion and commitment like the culinary artist he is. Then he added flour, butter, Worcester sauce, mustard powder, and stock. Voila! Ian McKellen's gravy. What do you think? Perfect. Uh, uh, you have a jug? I have a designated gravy boat. More than one. Oh. There you go. I'll let you choose. Oh, my God, Matt. <laughs> you have got more than one. I have. You've got... Nine! Have I? I've never counted them. I inherited some, and I bought some. You can always use another gravy boat, can't uh, you? I can't, no. I'm satisfied with one. That gives me all the gravy boatiness I need. What's your problem, Ian? My dear man, I don't have one. You do. We're looking at it as we speak. There's barely room for your cups. The gravy boats are taking over this cupboard, and soon... They'll take over your life. Forget the damn gravy boats, then. Just choose a jug. OK, now where are the jugs? In here. Uh, don't say it. Don't say what? Don't tell me I have too many jugs. I have small jugs, medium jugs, large jugs and whoppers. They all have their function. Which, which one would you like? You've got a jug army, Richard. They're about to spill out of the cupboard and attack you. <gasps> You're driving me mad, Ian. No, the jugs are doing that, and the boats. After lunch, we went into my living room and listened to Sibelius, Symphony Number no. 6. Some people find it cold. I don't. I find it warm and comforting, like, well, uh, gravy. I have three recordings of this. I suppose you're going to tell me that's mad. Not at all. You collect recordings of Sibelius VI? I do, though I must admit... Hmm? When I bought the third recording, I forgot I'd bought the second. Ah, uh, but they are all very different, I'm sure. They are. This is the first one I bought, Carian, the Berlin Phil. Oh, it's marvellous. Isn't it? I had to buy those other recordings to find out they're not as good as this one. <laughs> Your logic is impeccable. Have you ever read Middlemarch? Ah, I have. Yes, it's the greatest novel in the language, in my opinion. What do you think? I think the first ten pages are great. Aha. Uh -huh. Today is the day I start reading it and don't stop. 
Great literature is the antidote to madness, isn't it? It absolutely is. Do you need a ladder? Uh, no, no. I can reach the top shelf. Thank you very much. Oh! Oh! Wah! Oh, my darling oh. man, are you all right? Oh! Ah, yes, thank you. Oh. Just a bit shocked. Nothing broken? <sighs> no. How's your head? <sighs> you know your name? I do. You know who's Prime Minister? I do. I wish I didn't. Can I get you a glass of water? No, don't fuss. I must fuss. You had a fall. I did not have a fall, Ian. You made me sound decrepit. I tripped in a box and I fell over. A young man could have done that. How's the box? Is the box okay? But who cares about the box? I do. Check the contents. Oh, okay. What's in it? Nothing broken, I hope. Potato mashers. Ah, right, my box of mashers. You realize one masher can mash many potatoes. Each spud doesn't need its own masher. Ah, uh, thank you. Not to be sarcastic. But well, what are they doing in your living room, Richard? They're miles from any potato. Not miles. The kitchen's next door. <sighs> You're right. I can't go on like this. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. It's nice down here. Join me. Seriously? Yes. Plenty of room. Yeah. Now what? Look at the ceiling. What do you see? Nothing. Exactly. I need to see more nothing. I need to pack up all my stuff and put it into boxes and get rid of it. Well, that's a huge task. Don't worry. I know a couple of youngsters who can help me. You won't regret it. You're kidding. Nope. It's 25 years, I know, because Arabella told us she was pregnant. Oh, that's astonishing. Where does the time go? You've been bringing up children and working hard mm. and earning money. No shame in that. True. Are you sure you don't mean earning money? Excellent French impression as bun. Oh, you're never going to let me forget that, are you? Ah, oh, so here we are again. A hey, star of India, Finchley Road, still delivering the goods? Sorry, didn't order any vindaloo. Oh, don't be sorry. I'm so over that. In your 20s, you order the hottest curries in the world to prove you can take it. It's juvenile. Ooh, mature. I'm just saying, and I'm over pub quizzes too. Who needs them? It's aggression masquerading as a quest for knowledge. Oh, deep. How old are you now, Stephen? 51. 52. I'm 53. Ha! Still boogieing. I am. I was boogieing with my boys two hours ago. What about you, Richard? Have you hung up your dancing shoes yet? Not at all. I'm just a bit sore at the moment. You OK? Ian said you had a fall. I did not have a fall. I fell over. Sorry. Got that wrong. Mm -hmm. I tripped on a box of potato mashers, <laughs> and I lay there and stared at the ceiling, and I thought, I wish my walls were like my ceiling. Bare, not covered in stuff. The ceiling's got a light fitting. That's it. The walls have got shelf after shelf of books and records I don't need, because I never read them. Or listen to them. Wow. What's brought this on? Oh, you two. You told me 25 years ago I'd turn into a mad old man whose place was stuffed with stuff. So, with your help, that's not going to happen. How are we going to help? After supper. You're going to help me load my stuff into boxes. Oh, blimey. There's no such thing as a free curry, is there? We'll just do the books and records tonight. I've given it a name. Downstuffing. <laughs> it's like downsizing, but with stuff. Where's it all going to go? Maybe eBay, charity shops, recycling, upcycling, free cycling. Are there any more? I'm not much of a cyclist. You've got some great books and records. They should go to a good home. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm being slow. Of course, you two must take anything you want. Arabella, what would you like? Bleak House. I love reading Dickens. Have it. It fell from the shelf last night. Thank God I wasn't standing underneath. Talk about a sign. My books and records want out. Why can't I have it? I love reading Dickens, too. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You watched Muppet Christmas Carol with my kids. For God's sake, I was in A Christmas Carol at the Old Vic. You saw it. Yeah, you've read a script based on Christmas Carol. That is not like reading the actual book. I despair. Maybe I'll keep Bleak House. OK, oh. OK. I'd like your Puccini LPs, please. No, 
you wouldn't. Why not? You hate classical music of every stripe. I remember you saying that in this room. I did hate it, but now I don't. This is what happens, you see. You turn 50 and you start loving opera. Uh, uh, excuse me. I trained to be an opera singer, so don't tell me you start with opera when you're 50. I should have the Puccini, not him. Uh, can I say something? I've known you all these years, and I've never once heard you sing opera, not even when you're washing up. OK, OK, you ask for it. You want Puccini? I'll give you Puccini. Oh, mio bambino caro, mi piace bello, bello. Bravo, that's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm impressed. Glad to hear it. Yeah, I mean, some issues in the lower and upper register, yep. but overall, yeah, fairly fantastic. Let's finish eating and fill up some boxes with stuff. Stephen and Arabella boxed up my books and rakers, while I, like a good boss, stood over them and did all the heavy encouragement. By midnight, the floor of the living room was covered in boxes, but on the shelves there was nothing. I'm so grateful, instantly. I feel calmer, less materialistic, like John Lennon said, imagine no possessions. Mm. I'm imagining not possessing all that Puccini. Me too. It's easy if you try. Mm. Listen, I was thinking, we should do a pub quiz. I know what you mean about aggression, but I'm sure we can quiz in a grown-up way. Now we're all grown-ups. What do you say? Uh, why not? Me too. I look forward to that. Do they still have a quiz at the Crown and Two Chairman? I'll sort that out. Meanwhile, we can't leave here empty-handed after all that work. Would either of you like a gravy boat? Ah, well, I think Stephen and me can agree on that. We can. It's a no. Yeah. Imagine no possession. We did indeed meet in the Crown and two chairmen in Soho, just like the old days. But it wasn't like the old days. Oh, no. I had a plan. And I brought you pencils and paper, too. Oh. oh, bless you, you've thought of everything. Who are we playing? The Dog and Duckers? The Covent Garden Four? Now they know everything. No, it's just us. How do you mean? I looked at those boxes of records and books, and I thought, who deserves them for all they've done for me? It's you two. Well, can't disagree with that. Me neither. And then I thought, how do I divide them up? I know you both want my LP of Puccini's Gianni Schicchi, but... I can't give one of you side one and the other side two. Good mm. point, well made. I can't choose between you. You're like family. How can you prefer one family member to another? Well, I don't actually find it that hard. Uh, what are you saying, then? Winner takes all. All the books, all the records. Winner of what? Tonight's pub quiz. Oh. I've set the questions, you'll answer them, and one of you will win. You're pitting us against each <laughs> other. That's a bit weird. Yeah, it's also quite exciting. Good. We begin. The questions are in categories specially chosen for you. So the first category is money and money. Ha! Knew it! Bring it on. I will. Question one. Who painted Impression Sunrise, which led to the term Impressionism? Money. Definitely money. Don't say it out loud. Write it down. Oh, sorry. My mistake. OK, that question's void. She just answered it. But is her answer correct? Exactly. I could have said the wrong answer to throw you off the scent. Ha! OK, fine, I'll write my answer down. Yeah, me too. I've, uh, I've written uh, Monet. You? Monet. Is that the right answer? I won't reveal that until the end of the quiz. Oh, oh. this is torture. Question two. In 1868, did Descartes paint Monet and his wife or Manet and his wife? That's a question about Degas. I have a fundamental objection to this Manet Monet round. And what's that, Pray? You can get the answers right by just guessing. I mean, it's one or the other. Ah, that's a good point. I shall abandon the rest of this round. Tough. So at the end of that round, you've both scored one point. Hey. This round is about curry, and since curry is hot, it's a quickfire round. <laughs> Gosh, you really worked on that intro. Question one. What is the original Tamil word for which we get the word curry? Um, uh, curry. Pardon? Curry. That, that 
is total guesswork. No, I know this. Mm. Uh, can you spell it for me, Stephen? Certainly. Yeah. Uh, K. Go on. A. Uh, you can actually see he's guessing. R. I. Oh. K. A. R. I is correct. Woohoo! Oh. I am the champions. No time for guesswork. Sit down, please. Oh, sorry. Just celebrating my knowledge. Which is the hottest curry? Bindaloo. Bindaloo. No, it's foul. You both lost one point. Next round is gravy boats. What kind of round is that? Who invented gravy boats? That's the first question, yes. Oh. OK, right, so... Duke of Wellington invented the Wellington boot. Earl of Sandwich invented the sandwich. Yes, so is it the Duke of Gravy Boat? Or the Earl of Gravy Boat? You're right. You've suffered enough. Let's forget this and decide who gets everything with a dance-off. Ooh! So, that's what we did. We went back to my flat. And I made them dance to the love duet from Puccini's Madame Butterfly. The floor, as you know, was covered in boxes, so they had to dance on the spot. But they're talented actors. They conveyed movement without going anywhere. Bravo! That was heroic. No, no, it was absurd. Huh, well, do we have a winner? We do. About bloody time. As you know, I don't want to make the wrong decision. That would be invidious and cause dissensions. Mm -hmm. We just needed a name. OK. The name is Charity. Huh? Charity is the winner. All my LPs and books will go to the Oxfam Books and Music Shop. <sighs> did you ever intend to give one of us all your stuff? You didn't, did you? Mm. Ah, maybe not. All that stuff drove me mad. I don't want that to happen to one of you. Oh, yeah. great. Thanks for caring. What now? I suppose you want us to load our cars with all your boxes? Well, in a word, yes. As for the potato mashers, gravy boats, and fish knives, and my video cassettes, and my cassette cassettes, and the boxes of electrical leads that didn't lead to anything electrical, everything which didn't go to the dump went to the cancer care shop. Right, that's it. Where's the Oxfam shop? I'll come with one of you and show you the way. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll go with one of us and not the other. That's choosing, isn't it? It is. Ha! Huh. Indeed. That day, we got rid of 50 or 60 years of stuff. It was marvellous. I sat in my living room and stared at my white walls and my bare floor, and my mind opened up like a flower. I felt creative and full of love, so the next thing I did was invite Arabella, Stephen and Ian to lunch, to thank them. Gravy, my friends? Oh, you kept a boat, then. I did. One boat is all I need. Ian told me that. I'm glad. Did you keep a book? Two. The Bible and Shakespeare. Oh, right, like desert island discs. Precisely. I want this flat to be my desert island. No distractions. No stuff. The simple life. The simple, simple life. life. Simple life. So, what's so good about the simple life, then? Since I got rid of all my stuff, I've become much more creative. Yeah? Give us an example. Circular charity. Never heard of it. That's because he just invented it. Indeed. Just like he invented downstuffing. The man is having a creative surge. What's circular charity, then, when it's at home? which is where charity begins. Oh. Anything you don't need, you take to the charity shop, then you return a few days later, and if no-one's bought it, you buy it back. What, you give it away, then you buy it back? Sounds kind of mad to me. No, it sounds kind of circular. Thank you. What, so you take my water glass to the charity shop? Well, I wash it up first. Oh, uh, yeah. And then if no-one buys it, you buy it back? That's a perfect example. I don't need four water glasses. My friends can use wine glasses for their water. Or cups. Cup of water. Nice. I don't get it. You take Arabella's glass to the charity shop, then you buy it back if no one else has. Why? You just said you don't need it. Charity is its own reward. And, of course, you can take it to the charity shop a second time. Then a third time. Ian understands. Oh! 
Oh, you all right? I'm fine. Bit of back pain from all that lifting. Mm. But back pain is its own reward. I kept two LPs, Sibelius VI and the Elgar Cello Concerto. Two LPs to choose from as opposed to 2,000. It was a simple life, all right. I was alone with two LPs and my thoughts. And my main thought was, God, I miss my stuff. I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. I want to be alone with my stuff. So I went to the Oxfam shop to buy back all my books and records, but the lady behind the counter said those two people off the telly had already bought it all. The two people off the telly who brought it into the shop, well, they'd taken it out again. They told her it was circular charity, but they hadn't gone back to the cancer care shop, had they? Oh, no. So I went there and I bought back all my gravy boats. And I love them. I got nine, but I want more. I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. In Believe It, Stephen Mangan, Arabella Weir, and Ian McKellen all did their stuff. The program was written by John Cantor and produced by Clive Brill. It was a Brill production for BBC Radio 4. If you'd like to talk to someone about the issues raised by this programme, for goodness sake, don't talk to me.